Welcome to Democratic Television, a program of the Santa Clara County Democratic Party that brings insights, perspectives, and attitudes of our always thoughtful Democratic guests. Today we're joined by Supervisor Dave Cortesi, who is running to be the next mayor of San Jose. Dave, thanks for being on Democratic Television. Glad to be here, Steve. Looking forward to the conversation. Well, good. Uh, looking forward to the race, too. It's uh, got a number of folks in it. It generates a lot of interest. Um, before we start talking about that, let's get a little bit of uh, background in on you. Uh, one of the reasons why I think you're comfortable running for mayor is, A, you were on the city council, but more importantly, you grew up here. You have real roots in the Santa Clara Valley. Yeah, I did. I grew up on, in the East Valley. I was actually born at the Fort Ord Army Hospital, and my oh. my dad, who was a, uh, a he, he was commissioned there at the end of the Korean War. He was a first lieutenant, a training officer, and shortly after I was born, he moved the family, which was my mother and my father and myself, uh, out to Evergreen. So that's all I can remember. Of course, I was an infant when I got there, but yeah. you know there were nine homes in the entire area and it was all orchards and and that's what we did we were orchard farmers back in those days and and uh, got involved with a couple other types of farming i was running a, a hay and grain operation when i was 14 years old um so you i know, guess was, child labor laws weren't so important back then yeah you know i i do believe that uh, to this day because of the way farming grew up in this country with family operations um, kids are exempt from those child labor laws mm. and family operations. At least that's what they used to tell me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good point and, and probably an important point. You're the oldest of uh, Dominic and Suzanne's uh, kids, right? So you probably set the tone. We're going to be a good working family and uh, hopefully be prosperous. Yeah, and that came down from my paternal grandfather who was an immigrant here. Typical immigrant story in California. He came here by himself uh, from Europe penniless and you know that carries on that mentality and that work ethic I think in, in a lot of families carries on for a generation or two because uh, the habits and the, the work ethic um, really plays out for a couple generations and that's that's how it was that's mm -hmm. how I grew up and of course it was a fan it was a family farming business and operation and and then eventually um, I, I got involved and interested in politics myself as a kid but my father ran for the County Board of Supervisors and was the first Democrat elected back in 1968 uh, to a board that had been Republican for years and years and years. And so Dominic break, broke the uh, the mold. He broke the mold, and then we got Rod Deeron on and, and Dan McCorkadale shortly after that, and the Democrats took over the majority of the board. Thank goodness, and uh, you know things have been wonderful ever since. Uh, well, more or less, yes. <laughs> but in in terms of that, so. Uh, locally, you went to local schools, um, graduated, uh, probably your summer jobs uh, were working on the uh, farms, working on the ranch, uh, yeah, I taking mean, care of. I imagine there's a few viewers uh, who cut apricots or picked prunes out there. That's, that's how we grew up. That's how I grew up. And I was the oldest of five children that were born six years apart. Uh. And um, that wasn't uncommon either to have, you know, large families out you know, in, in, the, in these farming families and uh, went, ended up going to Bellarmine. And I went to a couple different elementary schools, including the old Evergreen School. Oh. Uh, but I ended up at Bellarmine. My, my eighth grade principal encouraged me to apply there and I did mm. and uh, got accepted somehow and uh, ended up at Bellarmine, which was a real good experience. Of course, academically, the school is uh, you know, famous for getting kids into four-year universities and went on. I went on to uh, Santa Clara for a couple of years and then got my bachelor's degree from UC Davis. Mm. Uh, got my law degree while I was working uh, a few years later, uh, raising my family. I was on the school board at the time, the Eastside High School board. Uh, I was right around 30 years old and I was going to law school at night and I finished in four years. Wow. Got my degree, passed the bar a week after my second daughter was born. <laughs> and. Uh, that's why. That's one of the reasons why they call my wife Patty the secret weapon. I, no matter what has happened, politically uh, or family-wise, uh, she's the real trooper. Well, I think you all are. But I hear what you're saying about the family ethic and the work ethic. Uh, multitasking is second nature. Yeah, it is. I again, I 
I kind of grew up with that old school um, instruction and mentoring that you never want to be idle. You know, if you got a, if you have a break, pick up a book and read it. Do something. Hmm. Um, and I still do that to this day. You know, we were uh, doing some campaign work uh, this morning, and there was a little break, and somebody handed me a list and said, "While you're sitting here, you know, take a look at this list and check a few names off of it." And you know, no complaint because it's second nature. That's just kind of the way I grew up. That's what you do. So, what made you want to run for the school board? Uh, East Side is a huge school district, huge budget, huge responsibilities. Well, you know, like a lot of young Democrats, I was involved in various activities, nonprofit groups, uh, activist groups in the community, and and I got the idea at some point. You know, all this time I'm putting into community activism. What if I focus that a little bit more on a single activity, like trying to improve education? And and once I once I decided. That was my next mission. Uh, you know, I ran for school board. I was elected in 1992. Eastside Union is the largest high school district in Northern California. Yeah. And immediately, uh, I was caught up in, in dealing with challenges there. And, and we had we had a lot of fun, a lot of challenges, but a lot of innovative programs came out of the next eight years, and I was proud to be a part of that. What were some of the things that you had to learn? I mean, again, you know, being a business person, you dealt with budgets school district is that you know amped up quite a bit yeah well you know in between those agricultural years and about the time I joined the school board um, I had worked in the banking business for about six years and then I went back to work for my family mm. uh, to your point running the business side of the operation I did that for 15 years and and it's true and there one of the things that is um, escapes people sometimes I think is the fact that balancing budgets in business and balancing budgets in the public sector really um, are, are very similar activities. And of course, I've done that for 21 years now as an elected official. If you fast forward all the way up to these, these last five years where yeah. I've been a county supervisor. Um, but it does, it, you know, we got there, I got to the school board and immediately found out they had an $11 million deficit and the entire budget was only $100 million. Wow. So we had to figure that out. And about 85, 90% of a school district's budget, of course, is, is in the classroom, it's teachers. And, you don't really have easy places to cut. So uh, it was interesting facing those challenges. We faced them, we balanced those budgets. Um, you know, we worked very collaboratively with uh, the teachers unions and the other unions at the time uh, because we knew we needed to get together with them and ask for their help in creating a sustainable plan to get through the next few years. You know, we didn't want to be litigating or fighting or, you know, sort of at each other's throats uh, over these kind of issues. Right. You know and we really had that mantra, we're all in it for the kids, let's just stick with that, that attitude. So what was it like working with other school board members? People come, I don't want to say with their own agenda because that sounds pejorative, but they have a sense of, I have a mission and I need to get four other people to agree with me. Well, that was another thing that I, I found out in terms of my abilities um, as a politician. I mean, you have to be a good politician to get a majority of the votes um, on any board or in any legislative body, yeah. and you find out about yourself. Um, that's why I encourage people who come to me and say, you know, I, I think I want to run for office. And a lot of times they want to start at city council or county supervisor or even legislature, and I really encourage them to, to start with a school board, not because it's easy, but because you find out a lot about yourself and your ability to work with other people and your ability to to collaborate with others in terms of getting majority votes. But of course, not everyone I worked with was, was easy to work with. Yeah. And you need to, to figure out right away, um, you know, who your allies are, of course, uh, who you can depend on, who you can persuade. Sometimes someone isn't a natural ally, but they'll listen to you. They're mm -hmm. open to persuasion. And, and then you learn that you need to be that way yourself, obviously. Uh, and uh, you know, now, you know, over 20 years later, I think it's really served me on a five-member board of supervisors. I have some natural allies there. We can usually get three votes, uh, but you need to understand um, that you, you need to be persuasive and, and you need to work with those people uh, for the greater good to make sure that you don't, you don't take anything for granted and don't take other people for granted when you're serving with them. You mentioned people coming up and talking to you. Uh, what's your philosophy about people talking to you? When you're an elected official, I think everybody wants to share their opinions. Uh, 
to be blunt, are you accessible? Can people find you? Yeah, I, I am, and I've always been that way. Um, I haven't changed my cell phone number in, in years, um, and if people want to reach me right now, you know, they can call to a number that will forward directly to me, which is 408-283-9140. Uh, if you ring that number, uh, it's going to come to my phone. And we do that not just during the campaign, but I do that as an elected official. When I was running for city council in the year 2000, uh, and I won that race, but when I was running and meeting with community groups, you know, talking to people in high school gymnasiums and so on, uh, one of the pledges I started to make was I told people after I'm elected, um, I'm going to stay connected with each one of you. Um, I'm going to be accessible to each one of you. And one day a guy raised his hand and he said, I don't believe you. He said, there's 90,000 people in this district. Mm -hmm. And he said, how are you going to do that? And I told him, look, you know, when we're running for office, we don't seem to have any problem at all reaching all the voters and, and all the people in the district. And, you know, if we can do it when you're running for office, you should be able to do it after you're elected. That's my philosophy. So that's what we've done. That's what we've tried to do. So um, you went from the uh, school board, the East Side School Board, and thought, yeah, I'm going to try this uh, city council stuff. Um, just thought, I mean, the problems, I mean, I'm sure there's similarities, but they're different. Much different, and especially on the San Jose City Council, including the mayor's vote, there's 11 members. That means there's 11 votes. So what we were talking about a few months, a few minutes ago, it becomes a lot more complicated. Yeah. It's not about getting three votes out of five. All of a sudden, it's about getting six votes, at minimum out of 11. And people have even more severely different agendas at times. Uh, and you not only have to be ready to move your own ideas, but you have to be very, very ready to react to the ideas of others, um, which of course aren't, um, aren't always ideas of shared values. Um, and you know, I found it to be uh, challenging, but again, rewarding and productive overall. It was a good experience. Uh, but the person who really has uh, you know, sort of the keys to the store when it comes to the city council and running the city of San Jose is the mayor because there's extra duties, extra responsibilities there that really help define and shape any given day, week, or year in the city of San Jose. So right. you know, looking, looking forward to try to go back there and, uh, and uh, put my own, you know, my own style on that office. Great. We're going to take a little break. We'll come back in a minute and talk about what it means to bring San Jose together. Hello, I'm Larry Stone, the Santa Clara County Assessor. Politics, particularly Democratic Party politics, has always been important to me. The Office of County Assessor is technically a nonpartisan office, but I've always been proud to call myself a Democrat and be involved uh, intimately with the Democratic Party. When I was growing up, my parents taught me to be involved in giving something back to your community. And I've been able to do that through my involvement in the Democratic Party. Uh, as assessor, uh, I look at myself as a fiduciary for schools, local government, cities, redevelopment agencies. And I think it's important uh, to let people know that I'm an active Democrat. So if you're interested, please give us a call at 408-445-9500. And thank you very much for watching DTV. Welcome back to Democratic Television and our guest, San Jose Mayoral, Mayoral I'm not used to saying that, Dave, Mayoral candidate, Dave Cortese. Um, so the Board of Supervisors is something you've been on for about five years now. You do deal with an enormous budget and a range of responsibilities that I think most people aren't aware of. Yeah, it's a $4.2 billion budget. There's 15,000 employees there's actually another 17,000 employees that do in-home care services uh, for the elderly and disabled. Uh, that's part of a state pass-through program. But the 15,000 primary employees uh, uh, is a big number. That, uh, most of the time, makes Santa Clara County the largest employer in the county, even larger than Cisco, for example. Mm. So, uh, But the county has a full range of, of service delivery, of local government service delivery. We have a sheriff's department. Uh, 
with deputies, of course, who have squad cars, and most people see them around all over the place. They're patrolling not only neighborhoods, but entire cities in some part of the parts of the county. Uh, we have a parks department. In fact, we have one of the, the biggest parks programs uh, in the county, which impacts, in a good way, uh, San Jose and all the surrounding mm. cities. Uh, we run the Valley Medical Center and all the clinics. That alone is a $2 billion operation with over 7,000 employees. So if, if you think about it in perspective, uh, many people who are listeners probably are familiar with city government. Um, a city like San Jose is actually smaller than just the county hospital system. <laughs> so that that's, it gives you some perspective on, on how big and important the county is. But juvenile justice, criminal justice, uh, all of those systems, the court systems, everything, court, yeah. everything you see out there uh, that is in that realm is also county. And then of course the thing that most people associate the county with, social services. Mm -hmm. uh, if somebody needs general assistance or uh, they need food from the food bank, oftentimes they come through county social services to get uh, those kind of needs met. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, important work, but um, here you are running for mayor. Now you served on the uh, city council for eight years, uh, went away and came back uh, hoping to come back. What, what are you seeing as you get out and talk about city issues again? Well, you know, I've only been gone uh, from city government for five years. That's the time I've been on the Board of Supervisors, and I love it where I am. I love the kind of work that we do, and I work with great people. It's just a wonderful Board of Supervisors right now. But I look over at the city, and in the five years I left, um, some serious things have happened. There were 1,350 police officers when I left. There are only 906 or so today that can wear a badge and a gun, and that's not enough. Um, we were once the safest big city in America, yeah. and that was certainly the case when I was on the city council. Uh, now we have one of the fastest growing crime rates in America, and we just found uh, that uh, FBI statistics tell us there were more auto thefts in the city of San Jose during 2013 than in all five boroughs of New York City. Oh. Uh, and of course, New York has a five to one population advantage on us. So this is, this is a, a catastrophic uh, problem. It's something that needs to be dealt with. And you know, police officers have been leaving at a rate of about 70 a year just by resignation. Those are just the ones that quit, not retire. So we've got to put an end to that. And it's gonna take trust restored. It's gonna take people getting back to the table and figuring out you know, how to make San Jose um, a city of, of choice for police officers and other professionals again, because right now, uh, that's not the way they're looking at it. Yeah. So you are out there walking precincts, you're knocking on people's doors. Um, I think it's no secret that as you are stating, crime is sort of issue number one for people. Uh, what else are people talking about? What else do you hear that people uh, tell you that you have to fix? Well, of course, public safety, as you uh, just alluded to, is, is such a huge issue that that's the issue that's really kind of filling up the candidates' forums and the high school gymnasiums and so forth. And when you're knocking on doors and talking to people on the phone, uh, that's the first thing they want to know. They want to know, what are you going to do to, to bring cops back to the city of San Jose? Um, you know, there are other issues like fire response times. Yeah. Uh, San Jose has, you know, fallen down severely uh, over the last year and a half in terms of EMT, emergency service response times, are supposed to get there in eight minutes or less, 90% uh, of the time. That's the standard nationwide. San Jose hasn't met that for about a year and a half. Uh, people want to be connected. You know, when I was on the city council, we went out of our way to connect neighborhoods with city hall so that people felt they can get their issues addressed and responded to directly and quickly. And you know, a lot of that has degraded and people tell you that when you talk to them. Uh, the city has not built parks uh, for the last several years, uh, presumably with a fear that there might not be enough money to operate yeah. them. But when you look at the situation, the city has about $80 million in its park fund right now. Mm. And people in the neighborhoods are getting tired of waiting for that little community park down the street to get built. And then you hear a lot about that. Yeah. Well, one of the issues that I know has come up is um, what can the mayor do in terms of education? How can we help the schools be successful? How can we help teachers be successful? Uh, what is your vision uh, given your eight years on the school board? Well, it's a great question. And, and the way you frame the question is really um, spot on because what the city can do is support 
schools, augment schools and school districts, you can't tell them what to do. Uh, they have their own separate governance structure. Mm -hmm. And of course, they know what they're doing by and large. Uh, but things like after school homework centers are hugely important. When I was on the city council uh, for those eight years, we developed over 200 after school homework centers in the city. My district alone, my council district, had 20 active homework centers. Mm. And it doesn't take much money or resources to do that. There are so many community organizations that want to help out with that kind of work. School safety is a big issue as well. I mean, the schools can't really provide their own law enforcement and intervention work with young people who may be getting recruited by gangs or just having general issues. Um, they really, schools really depend on, on the city of San Jose and even the county government to do that kind of work, uh, which is why as a county supervisor in 2011, um, I called for the rebuilding of an old program called School Link Services, which is, mm. is, is up and running again now. And the idea is to, to focus city and county services uh, in and around our schools to make them safer and to provide um, you know, opportunity for kids that are having a little bit of a struggle. Another issue that, that I've heard a lot about and read about is the whole question of homelessness and folks uh, living in, uh, in the creeks and you know highest populations of homeless and in the area, um, what is the mayor of San Jose going to do when he gets elected? <laughs> well, we're going to we're going to address that a lot more aggressively. Uh, the issue of homelessness a lot more aggressively than it's been done recently. And when I say aggressive, I'm not talking about police sweeps. One of the things I'm troubled by is the fact that uh, even now San Jose is still doing 52 police sweeps a year. Patty, my wife Patty and I, uh, a couple weeks ago, spent about an hour and a half uh, over in one of the encampments, the so-called jungle right mm -hmm. off of Story Road, one of the largest encampments of its kind in the country. Yeah. And there you have Valley Medical Center doctors, clinicians, psychologists, psychiatrists, helping people to stabilize. Um, but just about the time they start making some progress with them, getting them to take care of business, restoring their dignity, suddenly there's a police sweep ordered by the city of San Jose which just scatters everybody and takes all of their belongings. Uh, this isn't the way we should be trying to help people. And as mayor, what I want to do is take the veterans population that's mm. homeless, which is 10 to, 10 to 15 percent, Huge. amazingly, yeah. and get them enrolled in VA services and, and get them where they need to be. Um, they'll get a roof over their head that way. Children, 25 percent of the homeless are now kids, they're children. and. Um, that really reflects the population of the city and the counties overall. Uh, but those children won't be denied services uh, through state and county programs, but we need to enroll them. That should take 35% total off the population immediately. And then the chronically homeless, they need, again, to be stabilized. They need to be in one place long enough that we can work with them. That may be a month or two transitional housing so then we can uh, again give them a leg up get them back to work and get them into some form of permanent housing well and housing certainly is another issue all its own the mm -hmm. cost of affordable housing um, you know where are the working class gonna live um, do you have a solution there well we need production first of all first and foremost I mean the, the ultimate answer is is that these areas that we have zoned and general planned over the years for higher density housing especially along transit corridors mm. uh, haven't been built out and and we need to get to the bottom of, of why that's happening I think a lot of it is because uh, San Jose's uh, permitting process and planning process has been very very slow one of the slowest in the entire region and builders and developers who are trying to stay in business themselves have the opportunity to go elsewhere to do their business and we need to make sure that they're coming here because uh, it, it creates jobs here, construction jobs here, mm -hmm. other kinds of employment jobs for people that oversee housing, uh, apartment managers and everything else but of course more than anything it provides more housing stocks so we don't have these situations like we have had recently with zero vacancy and, and people, young people who have jobs and want to work here, uh, not being able to find a place to live that's affordable. Right, and find themselves in the jungle. They can find themselves in the jungle, and yeah. it's, it's not uncommon that that's a reason for people being there. Uh, we have mobile home parks in this city uh, that have been a source of affordable housing for years. 
Uh, and uh, now, for the first time, you're seeing the city council talking about converting some of those mobile home parks into you know, high-density housing or new developments. Well, what happens to the people that are living there? What about their dignity? How would you like to go home to your mobile home that you've lived in for years uh, at night and, and not know whether or not someone's going to pull the rug out from under you? Uh, this, this Again, this isn't the way we should do business in the city of San Jose. We, I want to I stand for a city where people can feel secure in where they live, uh, whether it's neighborhood safety issues, whether it's school safety issues, or whether it's just knowing that you know their home isn't going to be yanked out from under them because somebody wants to do a different kind of project there. Well, Dave, uh, bringing San Jose together, that sounds like a pretty apt uh, motto for a guy running for mayor. Uh, if someone wants to get hold of you or learn more about your campaign or your positions on issues, is there a website they can go to? Yeah, DaveCortezzi.com is the campaign website. And then you can email me directly, um, and it really will come to me, uh, not the campaign manager, at Dave at DaveCortezzi.com. Dave at DaveCortezzi.com. And, you know, the phone number again is 408-283-9140. That's me. So mm. if you're watching uh, Democratic TV, uh, please call me directly if you've got an issue, a suggestion, um, or even if you have a concern about something I've said. And I, we have about 20 seconds left. I know uh, many people will be voting very soon. People don't wait till June to vote now. Yeah, 80% of the people who are voting in the June 3rd primary these days, uh, unlike when I first started in politics, they'll be voting by mail. Okay. So the election starts May 5th. Okay. Think of it, think of it that way. Okay. Thanks very much for being on Democratic Television. Thank you. Thanks for watching DTV. Give us a call at 408-445-9500 or visit our website at sccdp.org and help make a difference. We'll see you on the campaign trail.